Welcome to China Insider. I'm your host, Bowen Xiao. With the election coming up, foreign interference has become a major concern for many Americans and government officials alike. What's noteworthy is that the US intelligence community has concluded that the Chinese Communist Party is the biggest threat to America's election security, not Russia. Attorney General William Barr has also publicly said the same about the Chinese regime. Meanwhile, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has directly contradicted Barr and the intelligence community by claiming without evidence that Russia poses the biggest threat. On September 4th, White House National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien said the Chinese regime has the most massive program among countries seeking to interfere in the U.S. election and has taken the most active role in political influence efforts. O'Brien told reporters at a briefing, there's always going to be propaganda. There's always going to be efforts to, to influence us. And again, we know that the Chinese have taken the, the most active role. But The National Security Advisor concurred with Attorney General William Barr's comments earlier that China, rather than Russia, poses the greatest threat to U.S. election security. O'Brien said he agreed with Barr's assessment 100 percent. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I, I agree with him 100 percent. However, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden directly contradicted the position of Attorney General William Barr and said that it's Russia, not China, that poses the greatest election security threat to the United States. On September 4th in Wilmington, Delaware, Biden told reporters, There are a lot of countries around the world I think would be happy to see our elections destabilized, but the one that's working the hardest, most consistently, and never has let up is Russia. He added, it's not consistent with briefings I've received. He's a lousy enough attorney general, but he's a really bad intelligence officer. In July, William Evanina, the director of the National Counterintelligence and Security Center, said that Beijing was ramping up influence efforts in the country by attempting to shape U.S. policy, pressuring political figures, and countering criticism of China. Later, Evanina said that Beijing would prefer Trump to lose the election in light of the administration's increasingly hardline stance toward the regime. On July 24th, Evanina said, Beijing recognizes its efforts might affect the presidential race. According to Evanina, Beijing is ramping up its influence efforts by attempting to shape U.S. policy, pressuring political figures, and countering criticism of China. Moscow, in the meantime, is using internet trolls and other proxies to spread disinformation and undermine confidence in the election. An expert previously told the Epoch Times, Chinese attempts to interfere with U.S. elections and politics, unlike Russia's methods, are focused on using economic incentives or coercion to influence business and political elites, given that these are the actors who shape policy and candidates' campaign platforms. However, Beijing's ambitions extend beyond any single election. Jeff Nyquist, an author and researcher of Chinese and Russian strategy said in an earlier interview, the Chinese objective is to embed themselves inside the West, and it becomes so powerful in their position there that nobody can say no to them when they want something. U.S. officials have recently sounded the alarm that the regime is targeting American business leaders and officials, pressuring them to adopt Beijing-friendly stances. O'Brien said the regime attempts to influence American business leaders by saying, If you don't support us in the U.S., your companies won't have opportunities in China and convey that. It's not the first time that the Chinese regime tries to interfere with the U.S. election. China meddled in the 2018 midterm elections. The China Daily, a state-run newspaper, bought a four-page insert to post pro-China, anti-Trump trade policy propaganda in the Des Moines Register prior to the election. The aim of the insert was to sway voter opinion regarding U.S.-China trade and reminding Iowa voters of Chinese leader Xi Jinping's deep and historical connections to Iowa. The state had strongly supported Trump's election in 2016. China's little propaganda ploy had little or no impact. Nonetheless, no one on the left cared about it. There were no special reports on CNN, nor articles in the New York Times warning about Chinese influencing an American election, which speaks volumes. Also, Google is working with the Chinese Communist Party's military and allegedly interfering in the U.S. presidential elections, both in 2016 and the upcoming 2020 election. Today, we have China expert Nicholas F. Timiades joining us on the show by telephone. Nicholas is a former senior U.S. intelligence official and author of the Chinese espionage series of monographs available on Amazon. His career in the government spans 30 years long. Hi, Nicholas. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Uh, thank you very, very much for having me. I am, I'm happy to be here. 
and exactly how does China attempt to interfere in America's domestic affairs? I understand that there are a multitude of tactics such as economic incentives or coercion to influence politicians. Can you give us more insight into this? The answer is clearly all of the above. Um, if nothing else, the Chinese Communist Party has proven that they have a comprehensive, extensive approach towards influencing foreign governments. And that includes influencing in the United States, that includes influencing the Congress, influencing U.S. businesses, um, influencing state governments, and providing a series of incentives as well as threats if the United States does not support, you know, communist China's development, if you will, or the CCP's continued reign in power. And we've seen this overtly, you know, a dozen times over. Mm. Whether it's the national, you know, the NBA, limits against the NBA playing mm. because of U.S. statements, all the way through to um, China limiting or not buying within specific uh, political districts that they know are, are important to President Trump to win. Uh, the manipulation is very obvious. The influence attempts are very obvious. So, mm. And it's comprehensive. You have to give them credit. It's well-managed and comprehensive. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Nicholas. Okay, thank you very much for having me. It's been a great pleasure to talk with you. We have another guest joining us today, Gordon Chang. Gordon is a political commentator, China analyst, and author of The Coming Collapse of China. Great to have you with us today, Gordon. Thank you so much, Bowen. So what is your take on the recent conclusion from the intelligence community? Why is China a bigger threat to election security than Russia? And Gordon, just how vulnerable are our security systems? I believe that the assessments from Attorney General Barr and others in the federal government um, about China's election interference are correct. This year, China's efforts are unprecedented. We saw this, for instance, um, that Twitter in June took down 174,000 fake accounts. That's one month one social media platform. And of course, China has used the other platforms such as YouTube and Google. Uh, the New York Times actually reported that in mid-March, Beijing was using social media feeds and text messages to propagate a rumor it knew was false, that President Trump was going to invoke the Stafford Act to lock down the entire U.S. So clearly, China wants to unseat the president and it really wants to determine the outcome on November 3. Meanwhile, Chinese state media have said they believe Joe Biden would be smoother for the regime to deal with rather than Trump. Why does China want Biden to win? And what is the greater context in all of this? Chinese state media and Communist Party media clearly favors Vice President Biden. And by the way, if we go back to the Democratic primaries, they were favoring Biden over Sanders. Um, so um, clearly China wants a new president and it wants the vice president. Um, China's media, um, and we've seen these um, releases um, throughout the campaign, are just unrelenting, everyday criticisms of uh, President Trump. So it's clear um, what China wants in this election. So in wake of what we know, Gordon, how can the United States effectively counter such attempts to interfere? What is the best course of action? I believe that we need not only a whole of government approach, but a whole of society approach. And that means we need to sever our links with China. We need to cut trade, cut investment, cut technical cooperation agreements, because these um, enrich a hostile militant Chinese state that is using the proceeds of all of these economic contacts and building up a military which is configured to kill Americans. So it, this at, at fundamental it, at fundamental level means a reassessment of relations with uh, China. Nobody wants to do this, um, but unfortunately, it's not up to us. China is driving this, uh, and unfortunately, We've got to respond, and we're going to have to respond if we want to maintain uh, our freedoms and our, our sovereignty. It was a pleasure listening to your analysis today, Gordon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Bowen. 
So the outcome in this year's November's election will have major geopolitical consequences, especially when it comes to China, the world's second largest economy. U.S.-China relations going forward will be a major factor we will be paying close attention to. Thanks for watching.